All right, in the next tutorial, we are going to do some cool things in um, After Effects for our menus for our um, DVD. Now, you might remember that we've just finished um, bringing in our menu from After Effects, including the, the, uh, the menu. I guess we saved out a Photoshop document, and then we did an animation, and we brought that animation into our assets, and we're using that as a motion graphics background. But now we have to create the other screens. The screens we're going to create are going to be our video thumbnail screens and our informational screens. Uh, before I do that, though, I want to go take a look at some of the issues that we have in After Effects. Now, I'm going to just rename this menu just by hitting the Shift, the uh, Enter key, and just rename it. And I know this one I'm going to use as my sub-menu. Sub-menu. So that's going to be my sub-menu, and this is going to be my main menu. Now you'll notice some issues that we have about the fact that we've got the button the exact same text. Now this was great because what we did is we created a pre-comp. Um, I am going to get rid of, actually you'll notice these aren't being used. The extras is not being used and the trailers is not being used. Only the play all is being used. So I'm going to get rid of those other ones because they're not being used. If I go back to the submenu, you'll see it actually deleted those from that menu because they those used to be there. Anyway, I'm going to call this play all so it actually is what that item is called. And here is the pre-comp that we made for this button. Now the problem is if we want to go back to our main menu and we want to use this in an animation where the buttons come in, then we actually have to have buttons that say what they need to say. So I'm going to come into this original button and take a look at the fact that play all is actually not live text. It's actually a Photoshop text item. And that can actually kind of get us in trouble, I think. Um, when we bring this thing into Encore, um, actually when we want to replace it easily. So anyway, I'm going to make it live text. So I'm going to go to the text tool. I'm going to use trebuchet, make it bold, make it black. Um, maybe it was gray, I can't remember. It's like some sort of gray. And I'm going to make it uh, 32 points so it's not too big. And I'm going to call this play all. So it looks like it should even be less, 24 points maybe. So it doesn't look exactly like, it's not quite as elegant as the other text, but right now I'm not going to go looking for that particular text. But now we have that actual text, and we still have, of course, our um, highlights. Now the benefit of this is that with this pre-comp, I can just duplicate this pre-comp, rename it by hitting the Enter key, so we'll have extras and just double click on it, go inside and just change that to extras. I can click on that black arrow. Now I'm going to duplicate that, hit enter again, change that to trailers, double click that, go inside and call that trailers. Now what we have are extras, play all, and trailers and they're all exactly the same size. Now if I want to make this reflected in the main menu it's really easy. I know play all does the same thing. I know this one needs to be trailers so I just click on the original item and I'm going to replace this pre-comp with the other pre-comp just by holding down the alt key and dragging in that comp. Beautiful. What it does is it adopts the exact same settings so it goes back exactly where it should be. Now I'm going to bring in the extras the same way. Oops, I need to click on the right one. So there, I'll put that one down there. So trailers, oops, extras, I want extras. There we go, so play all, trailers, and extras. And you'll notice that it came from the names that we had. Now the layer name right here looks like it needs to be fixed. So I'm going to call that play all. Beautiful. I think that will play all. Something's happening there, but the source name and the layer name, I think, I think it worked just fine. If that gets messed up a little bit, it's not a big deal, because when we actually save this thing out as an animation, what's going to happen is these um, would be a part of it. Now, what I was showing there was a pretty simple just find and replace, um, just replacing one element with another one. And we're actually going to do that 
in what's not going to be our submenu, but this is going to be our extras. Here we go. This is going to be our extras. And I'm going to get rid of that element, and I'm going to get rid of that element, because I know what's going to go inside here. It's just information about the different movies that we're going to be watching. Now, I can get rid of that information or that little background as well, and I'm not going to need that. But I am going to keep the trailers and the movie icon and, and the trailers for 2012. I'm going to keep everything else. Now, what we're going to do is import our other items. So I know that these items were in the assets, and then I've got these backgrounds and all that kind of stuff. So I know I need to bring those in. So I'm going to select all of those and go to import those into After Effects and just drag them into my design assets. So it means that I've got my Mission Impossible there and I've got my shame background and everything else. So let's go with the mission, let's see, Underworld. I think shame had the best background, didn't it? Yeah, shame kind of has the coolest background. So I'm going to bring that one in and I'm just going to import it into this comp just by dragging it in, hopefully dragging it in. There we go. So there I've brought it in and I'm going to put it actually kind of in the background here. And I can do all sorts of creative things. I can rotate it a little bit. I can scale it down a little bit. So it's it's going to kind of go in there, but I don't want it to be like super, super obvious. So maybe I'll do something like take the opacity down. And this is just so it becomes a part of the background, but it's not a major part of the background. We could remove some of the other elements so that they're not quite as um, as as crazy. Let's see, trailer wide. That Photoshop document has just that, so it means this. I'm going to turn off that particular item, which is the movie's GIF. There we go. That's what I wanted. So now it just it has kind of the shame in the background, but um, it doesn't have that movies, which is kind of hiding things. So I'll even delete it because I know I'm not going to use it. But you could rotate it. You could do all sorts of stuff. If you don't rotate it, of course, the text is probably a little bit easier to read. And we could fit it with this to the screen if we wanted to. That was Control Shift F. So there's lots of things we can do to make it fit on there just right. Now what we're going to do is bring in our other poster item. So there it is. There's how it would fit on that. And now we're going to add some text. So this will be Shame is the name of the movie. I'm going to make it white text, a little bit bigger. Now we can add things like uh, drop shadows to it, maybe. Uh, let's see, that needs to be perspective, so drop shadow. I like to take the distance off, softness 20, and take that opacity up. Now, if, if one isn't enough, you can always just duplicate it and have two on there, which is kind of nice. Now, you can take an effect and copy it from one item to another. So you can see that I, I just added some sort of um, drop shadow to that other item. Now, I can even do things like doing some sort of outline. Let's see if we can find generate an outline. Dun, dun, dun. Stroke. Look at that. I bet you it'll work. Man, it's not gonna do a it's not gonna do it. So here, maybe if we create something that fits the item. Dun, dun, dun. I'm trying to see if that did create what I want, which is a rectangle tool that fits it. There we go. Just double click on it. Somehow I know it applies. Now let's go back and look at that page. It's going to use the mask one. And now look at that. I have a stroke around that particular picture. And I actually might want to put that before the drop shadow. Actually, it looks like it should go on top of the drop shadow, because that way the drop shadow doesn't hide the stroke. The stroke is actually rendered on top. So I could actually add a whole bunch of other information here. Dun, dun, dun. Of course, the more information we, we create, um, the more we can say about this movie, which would be kind of nice. 
Obviously, we may need something else to make this text a little bit more legible. So maybe it wasn't a, such a good idea for me to get rid of that other box. I can always draw something else in here. Oops, I didn't want to draw a mask on that text. I'm going to unselect that text. So nothing is selected. And now when I go to draw, should be drawing a new shape layer. Yeah, there we go. So it's drawing a shape layer. I'll fill it with black. I'm going to put it on top of the other elements. I'm going to take its opacity down just quite a lot. There we go. Trying to get some stuff. Make that look a little bit better. Well, looks like I have a stroke, and I definitely don't want a stroke. So I can go to that stroke and make it zero. But I'm going to move that up to match. There we go. It looks like we'll be able to kind of read that text. So it's, it's a good start, at least. Now, the, the reason that I've done this this way is because if I wanted to change out one picture for another, it's actually quite easy. So if I want to go to the Underworld and bring in the Underworld picture instead, just hold down the Alt key and replace one image with another, and you'll see it comes in with the exact same settings. And that's what I love about using After Effects. It's that easy. Just select the item, hold down the Alt key, and if the two original sources are the exact same size, then it will replace one with the other instantly. And that, for graphic design, is just awesome. Now, we need to add some other things. We need to add um, something that will go back up to the main menu. So that means that I'm going to create a very simple text item that says main menu put it over here on the right oops let's change that scale just a little bit now it's very simple but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-compose this thing. So Control shift c and I'm going to move all attributes into a new comp. So this is going to be the main menu link, uh, or let's see, button. Now, as soon as I've moved that in, I'm going to double click on it. And you'll see that it will give me this big, huge button. And that's not really what I wanted. I didn't want that big, huge thing. This just happens to show um, that it's that's exactly where it was. Now, the benefit of doing this, though, is that I know that if I scale this thing to 100% and I put it right in the middle of my comp, and that is Control-Shift, like if you were to scale this thing funny, you'll see it goes a little funky. If you do Control-Alt-F, it will fit the screen, and that means it will go back exactly where it's supposed to go. So this is actually really a major benefit to us because that item will fit where it needs to be. Now, we can steal items from other menus. Like if I go to my main menu here, let's see, extras, there we go. I'm going to steal some items here, like highlights. Take those two highlights. I'm going to just copy those, go over to my main menu button. I'll put that in pre-comps because that's what that is. And I'm going to paste these in. And I'm going to try and find those and move them where they need to go. Doesn't seem to like moving around for some reason. So I'm going to have to do this zoom again. I'm going to use that zoom in tool to get exactly where I want to be. There we go. I'm going to squeeze that size in a little bit. Now, there are definitely some issues with what we're doing right now. And that is that it is cutting 
If you notice, it's squeezing in the two sides. So that was a really bad idea. So instead, I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep it the original. One thing I need to make sure, though, this is kind of a funky issue. I really want to make sure that I'm keeping these things at whole pixels. Actually, it's not doing exactly what I want. You see, as we adjust things, it gets a little sharper. That's actually what we want. We want it to be as sharp as possible. So it might be just finding the exact pixel dimensions. You can kind of see it kind of goes between um, soft and hard edges. But what we want, I know, are hard edges. There we go. Now I've got those hard edges, hopefully. This is where using After Effects can be less useful than Photoshop. One thing I might try doing is, come on, move over there. You can see that this thing is kind of giving me some funky rendering. And I've got to get it in the exact right spot to be a perfect squares. But that's what we want, our perfect squares. And this thing is really not working well. So here's where After Effects can kind of break down and not do so well as Photoshop. Because what we should have here are perfect, perfect squares. And I think that when we brought it in originally, it worked. But for some reason, it is not liking that. And I know I didn't scale it, so unfortunately, I can't fix this right now. But when we um, see it in the menu in the DVD, it will actually be very crisp. You know what? I'm going to leave that highlight going off the edge because I think it might be kind of cool. That actually might work quite well in my extras film. All right, so there. You've got the main menu, and it kind of goes off the side a little bit. Now, what we would do here is save out a document. We would save out um, our our Photoshop document because the Photoshop document would be used for each individual screen. So that means we can come up to composition, save frame as Photoshop layers, and we'll save it out. But I want to look at one thing real quick to see if we can adjust that. Meaning I've got a title here and I've got some text here and I know that we are going to apply, you know what, now that I look at that drop shadow, I think it looks kind of bad. I know that we are going to try and update that text in Encore itself, which would be really, really cool. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, there are one other thing that I did miss here. It's always what happens when you're doing a demonstration. I am missing my arrows, and I'm missing naming this thing the proper way. So uh, the main menu item the proper way. So my arrows. I do need to find. Let me see if I can create some of those. 